All right, Gilbert, let's break this matchup between the Rams and the Cowboys. Let's start off with storylines. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you start, Gilbert. Yeah, let's go with the with the opposing team, the Dallas Cowboys. Like I mentioned, they beat the Chargers before the bye weekend. I thought it was a pretty uh, good good performance because before that they were they were struggling. You know, they they uh, they lost surprisingly to the Cardinals. They got beat down by the 49ers, and it just shows you how how, how much of a long season it is because the 49ers have not won a game since they crushed the Cowboys. So they're back in the race for the NFC, and you know they're they're one of the top teams in the in the, in the NFC. And, you know, I'll say this about the Cowboys offense. It wasn't like the best when they played the Chargers. I was there to watch that game in person at SoFi Stadium. But they finally got their big playmakers involved. Like Tony Pollard had a big game. CeeDee Lamb had a big game. And I know CeeDee Lamb didn't find the end zone. But Dak Prescott was feeding CeeDee Lamb. And when you when you feed CeeDee Lamb, that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Like, all right, where is this guy now? He's going to go off today. So that, that, that gives you opportunities for Michael Gallup. Uh, Brandon Cooks got his first touchdown against the Chargers because Brandon Cooks has done nothing for the Cowboys until that game. So that just shows you CD is on a tear and the, the opposing defense has to figure him out. That opens up for Jake Ferguson too, the tight end. So he finally got something there. I still have concerns about Mike McCarthy, you know, as uh, the, 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 the coach, as a manager, like he doesn't use his timeouts pretty well. He makes a lot of weird decisions, you know, before halftime before the game is about to end. So when he's juggling the play calling and being the head coach, he kind of gets in trouble sometimes. But they really turned the corner in that game offensively. So before, they were leaning on their defense. Like the defense was doing well, and then that defense lost Trevon Diggs. But, you know, they haven't been the same. But when I saw Michael Parsons and Stephon Gilmore close it out in, uh, in SoFi State, and that tells you they still have a lot of talent. So... They're still trying to figure it out. Maybe the Rams could catch them in that phase of figuring it out. But uh, I was really impressed with the Cowboys before uh, they went for the bye week. Yeah, and I, for me with the Cowboys, it comes down to, you know, and I, I'm going to ask you this, is is it that of why this offense is struggling or is it Mike McCarthy's play calling? And before you answer, let me just kind of go over a couple of things in terms of what's happened with the Cowboys is on offense. We'll start with the offense and then we'll get to the defense, Gilbert. But offensively, one of the things that they did during the offseason, you know, you let go of Kellen Moore, right? You bring in Brian Schottheimer to be the offensive coordinator. You have Mike McCarthy taking over the play calling. And then you install an offense, which is the West Coast offense, and you call it the Texas offense, whatever that means. And one of the big things so far has been the 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 Dak Prescott's interceptions are down, but he's only had six total touchdowns through six games. So, and they've been abysmal in the red zone, and that's that's or that's happening around the league. We've talked about this, whether it's on 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 a regular compass or on the Look Ahead show. You know, everybody's struggling in the red zone, so it's not just the Cowboys, but in terms of how this offense works, and you 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 laid it out perfectly with all the names that you brought up, and I just think that you still can't find the identity with this team now that he's take Mike McCarthy has decided to take over play calling for you. What is it? Is it Dak? Is it the play calling? Why is this offense still stalled as of right now? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a little bit of both because I, I did see Dak Prescott miss a couple of throws to Michael Gallup. Like, Michael Gallup was pretty open against the Chargers on that Monday Night Football game, and, and, and he missed them. But then, you know, before that Chargers game, like I was looking at the numbers, like all across the board, the Cowboys offense was down from the Kellen Moore couple years. You know, the, whatever year you want to talk about Kellen Moore, it was down compared to Mike McCarthy's first five games or six, whatever it is. And he was running the ball a lot more. And when you're running the ball a lot more, like Tony Pollard reminds me a little bit of Austin Eckler, a little bit of Travis Etienne. Like these are these are your skill players, finesse players. You know, they're shifty, but they're not bruisers. And if you're trying to be a run-heavy offense with Tony Pollard, that doesn't really seem right. Like, like Pollard is explosive. He's not going to be a Derrick Henry for you. And they don't have Zeke Elliott anymore. So 
I think it took Mike McCarthy a while to figure that out. Like, hey, how about you get CeeDee Lamb? He's your best player. Like, get him involved through the air before you want to establish a run like it's 2002. So I don't know if it's one game, Vic, or or he finally figured out, like, okay, I got to go CD before I get Tony Pollard involved because he really made an emphasis to get him involved. And it probably took CD uh, for him to, to criticize it or somehow throw some jabs in, through the media saying, hey, I got to get, I need the ball more. And one of the things that, that stood out to me when CD Lance spoke to the reporter, he was like, yeah, you know, just give me the ball early and you see what happens out there. So everybody was happy. But again, it was one game. He could always go back to his stubborn ways. And I guess for my response here, Victor, I'm leaning more to Mike McCarthy being the problem. Like, you can't be old school. I get it. When it comes to playoff time, you want to have a bruiser, and we see the Eagles, they're physical. You better be physical in the trenches and run the ball in the playoffs. But they're missing that. Maybe they go for Derrick Henry. I don't know. But they're missing some kind of physical element or run McCarthy's offense, so it does not work. So, you know, I, maybe it could have been Mike McCarthy seeing Kellen Moore on the other side and saying, I'm going to beat you because there was some kind of – there was a little bit of counter going on in the first half of that game, and McCarthy just took over. So, you know – Maybe for the Rams, they're hoping that it was a one-time thing. But I'm sure McCarthy is probably looking at the film and the bye week. Like, hey, I actually figured it out here. Let's keep doing that. So if they're trying to be a run heavy, they just don't have the person personnel to do it. And then their offensive line has been pretty banged up too, Victor. That's another big issue. Yeah. They could be healthier this week too. Yeah, that, that was going to be my next point is that their offensive line, like my biggest thing is, has been with, with a lot of the teams this year that I looked at, you know, where whether we looked at, these previews and and the offensive line every every offensive line is different that we've seen so far that has played against the 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 Rams this season and part of the problem is with the Cowboys is they haven't had a healthy they've they're they're always missing one of their guys so if they're all playing that's that's going to spell big trouble for for the Rams defensively but i guess the one thing you can take from this in the positive for the Rams is the fact that you know that Mike McCarthy is going to keep you in this game because of his decisions and his decision making and I know that that gets a lot of flack but I don't think it's on him I think a lot of it is because he plays for the Cowboys he there's a lot of you know eyes on on this team and I think it doesn't help when you have someone like Mike McCarthy who is stubborn as you said and uh, it's just uh, at least go at least for this game I think Ram fans you, you know you you can at least know that Mike McCarthy is going to keep you as I said it's going to keep you in this game and then my my next question to you in terms of the defense is are they still dominant even without Trayvon Diggs for you because I've looked at this defense you know you have Michael Parsons you have Demarcus Lawrence, you have talent all over. The, the they they lost uh, a couple of linebackers due to injuries, but the secondary is still really good even without Trayvon Diggs. So, are they still dominant even though they got you know dominated by both the 49ers and the Cardinals, two other uh, NFC West uh, uh, teams? I'll say they're very good, but they're not dominant. And before I get to that point, Victor, you're right. That that second there has been pretty good, even without Trevon Diggs. That shows you the the type of depth that they have and how much that trade for Stephon Gilmore is paying off. Like, it hasn't worked out too much for Brandon Cooks, but I thought it was a big gamble that the Cowboys just kind of went cheap. And, hey, let's give six-round picks to some veteran guys who might have a little bit of miles left, but let's just see what happens. They got to ride with Gilmore. He's still he's still doing uh, doing well on balling out. But the biggest disappointment so far, Victor, I got to say, I expected a lot more from this defensive front. Like, we were talking about, you know, the Cowboys having, like, four or five good pass rushers, and it's just been the Micah Parsons show. Like, where is the Marcus Lawrence gone? Like, what happened to the breakout season of Sam Williams? And, you know, I know they got a, a few more other veteran guys there, too, but like, it just feels like it's just been Micah Parsons on an island out there, and they haven't really got the help. So, you know... When they had Trevon Diggs, they, they they had a lot of playmakers, and they were winning with takeaways. They weren't winning with a bunch of pressure. It was it was a turnover battle. They were winning that, and that was Diggs' specialty. Like I, I get it that he's up and down as a coverage guy, but he's a playmaker. He he's always around the ball, and they're missing that element. Now you need your defensive front to make those those key games and, and those key moments in games and, and and dominate the takeaways and all that. So when you're gonna triple team, double team Michael Parsons, you need somebody else to step up. I haven't seen it. Like when I saw them in person at SoFi, I'm like, where are the other guys? They're not stepping up. And 
you know, eventually Michael Parsons had to do it himself and sack Herbert and Gilmer got the, the interception. So when that front is going, that creates more opportunities for the secondary to get interception. So it's a little bit disappointing, uh, this, this, uh, these pass rushes, because I kept saying they have five or six guys, they have a deep rotation. And so far, it's just been Michael Parsons to me. Yeah. And it helps to have, you know, someone like Dan Quinn. I, I've been really impressed with how he's changed, you know, uh, his, his scheme throughout the years. And now, you know, you know, everybody expected him to run that cover three that everybody knew from the Seattle days. And then he goes to Atlanta, becomes a coach. And now he's flourishing again as a defensive coordinator with the Cowboys to the point where I think they gave him a fat race. There's nowhere he's going. Like if, even if I, I believe that even if they fire, uh, uh, McCarthy here after the season, he's staying as defensive coordinator because you don't want to you don't want to let that guy go because he's been really impressive with what he's done with this defense, especially what the talent that he's able he's been able to produce. Um, uh, there's guys on there that you know. Well, I'll talk about you know guys guys like Deron Bland. I'm sure not a lot of people know about. Mm-hmm. So and we'll we'll talk more about it. But I just wanted to make sure that. Uh, Dan Quinn got his got his flowers because he's he's done a great job uh, as a defensive coordinator for for the Cowboys. Yeah, Vic, just to keep uh, just to give you numbers on the on the on the Cowboys defense. Like I'm looking at the sacks right now, they only have 16 sacks. The Cowboys this year, and the first team is the Ravens with 29. So that's half. So you would think with a team with Michael Parsons and a bunch of very good pass rushers will have more than 16 sacks. So. But, you know, to your credit, Dan Quinn is still doing a fantastic job because I just saw they're only allowing like 17 points per, per game. They're allowing like 177 passing yards. The, the Russian defense has been okay, but the sacks, man, that's been down. You know, at first I was like, I got to double check my, my my opinion here and, and the numbers show like they're not even getting a lot of pressure there. So, uh, but it's still very good defense because Dan Quinn is doing a good job and he's been a great DC. And, you know, I think I was, I was, I was reading stories that Dan Quinn pretty much said no to head coaching jobs because he felt this defense was so special that he wanted to be a part of it. It hasn't really been the case. And now that I think about it, uh, Victor, I think their second second round draft pick, was, a, which is an outside linebacker, I'm blanking on his name, uh, he got hurt before the season. So that was part of the depth too there. So if Cowboys fans see this, they're going to probably tell me injuries are also an issue. Uh, they also you know, lost uh, Leighton Van Der Esch too, their linebacker too. So that defensive front has injuries, but you still have a lot of you, – you, your thing was depth and they're not making it work right now. Yeah, and that was one of the things that I really liked about this Cowboys defense. I know you you drafted them in fantasy. They were they were a team that I was really looking to get in fantasy because they 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 go too deep at every position, and you know when especially when you're looking at defenses for your fantasy, you want some, even if there's injuries, you want somebody you want a team that has depth. Because they can replace, like you're you're starting to see with the Bills, they don't have great debt, and so now that all their key guys are going out, they look like a bottom tier defense now, and so this tells you how much debt this team actually has. I mean, they're not gonna they're not dominant, you know, as they would have been with Trevon Diggs, but they're still pretty good because they have a really good debt. Uh, yeah. All right, Gilbert. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, even like you, you, when you think you have a special defense, you're going to still probably get lit up. Like the Browns, they got crushed by Gardner Minshew. So it's hard to be a special defense in today's football and today's rules. Yeah, you're right. Even the 49ers, we saw what, yeah. what, what the uh, the Vikings did to that defense. So it, you know, it it's a week to week league. And then, and, and, and some of these teams are going to catch up to you. And that's just the way it is. And injury and the fact that your body, it's just you know you're nobody's healthy this time of year, and so you know you, you're gonna have bad games here and there. 